Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can take precise control of your tile variants and then I'm going to teach you how to make objects spawn on your tiles and then I'm going to teach you how you can give those objects their own variants and then I'm going to teach you how you can make those variants spawn yet more objects with their own variants. Excited? So to start I just want to quickly mention the parenting helper since it's so easy. Go to Tile Tools Parenting Helper to open it. All it does is parent any selected objects to the last selected object. It also allows you to parent things to the world. Unparent them. Now you may notice that it's practically identical to the Game Object Make Parent and Game Object Clear Parent tools. So why would I bother developing something so inane and that already exists? Simple. Once you start using your tiles, you're going to find that each tile prefab is going to need a number of things attached to it. Collisions, sounds, particle effects, whatever. But every single one of those things needs to be parented. And if you have a lot of tiles in your tile setup scene, like me, you're going to find that not only will you have a very, very tall hierarchy panel, so that thing is going to be super impractical for this, but you're also going to get very tired of that drop down menu. So this tool just makes parenting and unparenting or changing parents for billions of things less tedious. Since to use it, just select and click to parent. So let's move on. We'll use this later. Now let's learn how to control tile variants. So the first thing to know is that step one already does add a tile variant component to any tiles it finds variants for and adds the variant prefabs into it for you too. So after you've run step one, you can do tiled tools geometry variant tool to add more variants or otherwise update what step one did if you want. Basically you just need to know that all variants are handled with the tile variant component and that this tool adds tile variant components when needed and connects variants to tile variant components when it finds them. And like I said step one runs it for you once to start you off. So let's take a look at this tile variant that was already created for us by step one. And let's examine some things we can do with it. One thing you can use it for is to allow a tile to spawn in as rotated 180 degrees, for example. Like this tile here. If I choose Rotation 2, that lets the tools know that this tile makes sense at both its current rotation or also at 180 degrees, which it does. So let's leave it. Oh, and don't forget to hit Apply. You can also choose Rotation 4 which then lets the tile appear at either 0, 90, 180, or 270. Like this tile here is a good candidate for that because it's the same on all four sides and so are its variants. And finally, you can choose Rotate Free, which is good for objects like trees that could be rotated in any angle in Y. Chance to Exist has no effect on tiles, but if this tile variant were on any other prefab, you can use that to make it spawn only a certain percentage of the time. So instead, let's look at chance. One thing you can do in tile variants is set a chance for this tile versus its variants. You can use this to bias any variants that you want to occur more often than others. A higher chance means more chance for that variant. Think of it like a raffle ticket. All chances are added together, and then one is chosen. The more chances a particular variant was given, the more chance it has to be chosen to spawn. And the value you put in chance here is the chance given to this original prefab. You can make it as high as you want. It's not a percentage. What matters is the relative chance among it versus its variants. You can also specify your own variants for a tile by dragging them into here. And you can add as many variants as you like. The tools will do that for you though if you just place variants properly in the scene. So let's go back to the geometry variants tool and look at the options. One thing that you might need, particularly if your game is multiplayer, is specifying a custom variant component here. Now my tools come with the default tile variant we looked at, and this might work just fine for you, but in practice, there's a chance you're going to need your own solution for how a tile chooses its variants. For example, let's say you're making a multiplayer game. Since you probably don't want different computers showing different environments, how will you know that all computers will choose the same variants? Well, since I can't know how you'd want to decide this, I took a good guess and just created a base class that handles simple cases. So if you find you need your own solution for this, 
Make a class that inherits from the tile variant base class, and then just put the name of that class in this slot when you run the tools. And the tools will then use your class instead of tile variant. Tile variant is a simple class, so don't be intimidated if you need to do this. Now I'm going to talk about another thing you can do with the tile variant class. Let's say you have an environment like mine. These tiles are begging for lots of trees, grass, rocks, and all manner of decorating. Now you could make a lot of variants for every single tile with every type and combination of thing you can possibly spawn on it. Or you can use tile variant components to manage these variants for you. Here's a hint. Using tile variant is much more powerful and much easier. I'm going to show you how you can use tile variant to spawn objects and even objects with variants on a tile. The main idea that you have to understand is simple. You can nest tile variants. So first you create the things you want. Let's say a tree. We're going to make two copies of this tree. Let's call one S underscore tree. S is for stand in. And the other let's call A underscore tree. I like to use the A prefix for my prefabs. So they show up at the top of the project view. Let's add a stand in component to S underscore tree. And the stand in component is very simple. If you look at the code, it's a trivial class. A stand in is just a pointer to another game object, generally a prefab. And the reason we need them is because what I would really like to do is parent a tree prefab to this tile prefab. However, that's not possible in Unity. You can't have a prefab inside of another prefab in Unity. So we use the stand in instead, which just points to another prefab. So here's a underscore tree, the real tree. And let's make a prefab out of it. And so we drag the prefab we just made into the stand in. And it's in this prefab that we set everything we want. So then we go around duplicating our stand in tree and parent the copies to every tile where we want it to occur. And for this, use the parenting tool I gave you. It makes this part much easier. And you know what's going to happen after I'm done, right? As soon as I'm done placing all my trees everywhere, and I've parented all the stand-ins to every tile, I'm going to change my mind and not want a tree anymore. I'm going to want to change it to a shrub, or a rock, or a different species, or change something about it. Well, this is great news for us because now I don't need to change all my stand-ins. I just need to change the prefab that the stand-ins already point to when I want to make a change. It might even be a good idea to use representative objects like cubes or cones as stand-ins if you think that they'll be getting major changes because the stand-ins themselves are actually destroyed during tile placement. Now here's the real power in this. The A underscore tree prefab that the stand-in points to can also have a tile variant component. And that tile variant can also have stand-in children that point to yet other tile variants. And on and on. So you can have any combination of objects spawn other objects in infinite combinations or regressions. It's pretty powerful if you think about it. But for now, I'll just add one variant to it. Let's use this one. Let's call it A underscore dark tree. Make a prefab out of dark tree and make it a variant of tree. Let's allow free rotation too. So before we try more nesting, let's see this in action right now. We finished parenting S underscore tree to the tiles, which was easy using the parent helper. And once they're all placed, we need the geometry variance tool again. There's something I didn't mention about this tool earlier. Besides setting up variants, it also lets tile variants know about any new stand-in children. So this time, since all the variants were already added, all the tool did is add the new stand-ins into this array here in the tile variant components. And it updated the tile prefabs for us too. Now having the stand-ins in this array guarantees that everything always gets spawned in the same order. And this is essential if you ever want to replicate an environment on different computers. So really quick, I'm going to make a map that uses a lot of the tiles we just edited. And so we go to step three. The map name is, and spawn. Now look at that, a forest. Where's our dark tree? Let's take a look at our prefab. 
Oops, it looks like it defaulted to zero chance. Let's put it to 50 so it has equal chance with the original tree itself. And try again. Nice. Now let's say in this forest, when I spawn a dark tree, which right now spawns half the time, when that happens, what I really want is for it to choose between either it or any of these. For this, we're going to do more tile variant nesting. So first, I have to make prefabs of these. And remember, call them all A underscore something so they show on top in the project view. Then I add a tile variant to my dark tree prefab and add all the prefabs of the species to the variance portion of the dark tree prefab. And that's it. Using the chance variables, I can even bias how often one will spawn versus another. The higher the number, the higher the chance. And step three, place tiles. And look at that. Variation. Note that a underscore tree is still 50% of the trees. Now I'm going to do one more nest to demo the tile variance regression. I declare that this species here will now be a Christmas tree. And I want to spawn red balls on it. Again, we want a stand-in version and a prefab version. I'll call them A ball and S ball. Make a prefab of A and make S point to the A prefab. Now let's place S ball everywhere we want it to spawn. And don't forget to run setup variance in the geometry variance tool to let the tree know about the balls. Let's run step three again. Christmas trees. Now let's say I don't want the balls to spawn absolutely everywhere like this. This is just too many red balls. I only want to spawn them sometimes. Like grass tufts. We wouldn't want those to appear absolutely everywhere that they can spawn. We would only want them to appear in some of the places that they can spawn. So to do this, we just add a tile variant to the ball prefab, even though it will just have one variant itself. But this will allow us to control how often it spawns. So let's set chance to exist to say one third of the time. Run step three again. And you have randomly placed Christmas trees with randomly spawning balls. And lo and behold, colored balls. Let's make prefabs of these balls and add them to the ball tile variant as options. Step three again. Witness the power. Okay, so let's review. To control the spawning logic, you just have to remember one thing. Tile variants use stand-in children. That's all you have to remember. That's because a tile variant can have its own variants. And anybody's stand-ins can point to either normal prefabs or other tile variants that can continue branching. And at every branch, you have total control over the probability of each choice. Oh, and don't forget to run the geometry variant tool after you're done parenting stand-ins. Now you might have noticed that it's possible to make an infinite loop with this system. Say you have thing A that spawns thing B that spawns thing A again. If Unity crashes while spawning tiles, that's why. Don't do that. Just stay organized and personally I avoid deep branching. You'll find that you already get a ton of variation by the time you have two branches. So the last thing I want to touch on here is that the tile variant class is designed to be overridden. In particular, if you need tight control of the way things spawn. So for example, maybe you want objects on one side of the map to spawn differently than on the other, or maybe more often, or a different color based on their position in the space, 
or maybe you have a multiplayer game that needs tight control of the random choices or is not random at all. In cases like these, take a look at the tile variant class and consider overriding the virtual methods.